and now moving from what we already have to what we will have. So the next, our next speaker will be Philippe, Philippe Dumont, CEO of Ellerlink. And Ellerlink was already today much talked about the new cable that's probably will be inaugurated. Oh, uh, uh, we're, okay, we have some, some even visuals. So cable that we understand will be inaugurated next week, yes? Yes. Philippe, so, so really would like us to present all that bright future that is coming to Portugal and to Europe. And please, the floor is yours. Okay, so this is the bright past, uh, not the bright future. This uh, piece of cable has been recovered when we were laying Ella Link, and I think it's interesting for the audience. I mean, there's not so many people, but this is a cable that is dated 1897. That's quite a long time. And, um, and it's supposed to be the one that was connecting Carcavelos to uh, Gibraltar. And I think there are a few guys in the place that might want to see that, okay? Uh, just as an introduction, indeed, this industry is, a, is an old-timer. It's been invented, invented by the English people, really, and they have covered the world in, uh, in the years uh, 1850 onwards, and this is a piece of the past. <laughs> okay. Now that I made my little buzz, I can start my conversation. Okay. Uh, I think there was a presentation. I don't know if. Uh... Okay. So you. C oh, right. I have that. Okay. So Elalink is a cable that's. Uh, starting in Portugal and linking uh, directly uh, South America for the first time. It, it, it's a bit strange to say for the first time. It's like if you wanted to go to Sao Paulo, you would need first to land in Atlanta and then take a plane to Sao Paulo and there would be no other options. The fact in the matter is um, the, the, the network is, is a lot date uh, US centric for many reasons, okay? But Europe is the beast into that. And it's probably not known to many people, but 50% of the communication in and out, I'm talking about international communication, as per Telegeography, who is a very, uh, one of the key analysts here, 50% uh, of the uh, traffic gets in and out of the Europe. And that's far most of whatever is getting uh, out of Asia and, uh, and, and more than what is getting in and out of uh, North America, okay? And that's important to say. Europe is a important, if not the number one, uh, place for data traffic. Uh, the the um, traffic is growing at the rate of 35% per year. That's enormous. That's not so common to any industry. Uh, and that's more or less across any geographies, uh, and we do expect that probably the uh, the next growing more okay number one growing place will be Africa, and South America. In that sense, Europe being number one, Portugal is probably the number one place to uh, to to take advantage of that with regard to the geography, the position they have, and, and I think we, we've already covered this. So. Okay. I think someone from DECX uh, one day said, latency is the new currency. Okay. Latency means technically the speed at which the communication uh, goes from one point to the other. And it's like a car on a highway or a car on a small road. Basically, if you take the small road, the scenery might be more interesting, but you, 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 you're going to arrive later. Uh, the advantage of LLN compared to the existing routes is that it's directly connecting Europe to Latin America. The difference is substantial. We're talking dividing by two, the speed at which you're sending information. And in today's world, it is extremely important. The past was about connecting cities. Where? Because Why? Because the traffic was made of voice. It was not made of data. Today, what the cables are doing is that they're connecting data centers. 
data center to data center. The city is not so much of importance because the city will be connected at the edge to the data centers. Uh, what Elaling does with latency is really creating the condition for these two continents, Europe and Latin America, to work together, collaborate and develop an industry. Our cable is landing in Brazil, in uh, Fortaleza. You probably don't see the numbers uh, here. Fortaleza has, is, is an enormous hub uh, for, uh, for submarine cable. Lots of people know that. I think there are more than 10, I think 11, 13. 14, 14 cable arriving. Well, yeah. Portugal is, is far from that number for the moment, okay? 10, yeah, but 10, but Fortaleza, it's all arriving in one place, okay? And why is it so important? Uh, it's important because by concentrating submarine cable to a place, then you are giving the condition for the rest of the industry to develop. And the rest of the industry is uh, data centers. Uh, it, it's, it's quite obvious. Uh, and this is what we're trying to achieve at this moment. And I think this, uh, this little chart is very interesting. We always tend to look at the map with the Mercator view, right? And if people forget that when you are located in Sines, Lisbon, that does not really matter, okay? You are you're 60 milliseconds from Fortaleza, which is, as we said, a very important hub in the uh, subsea world. But you're also very close. I mean, that's about the same distance from Ashburn. I mean, people don't know Ashburn. People, I mean, you don't know Ashburn. You may not know Virginia Beach, which is the beach close to Ashburn. And Virginia Beach is basically the point of, uh, of depart for all the new cables that are being built by the OTT at this moment. Okay. And that's interesting to note here that CNS, Lisbon, whatever, is closer to any point on the European map. And that's an advantage that can be developed. Just need to be convinced and put the right conditions on the table. Okay, I, I will not comment that slide. There are many slides. W w w this one is interesting as well, I said it already, but and from a geographical perspective, again, it's, it, I mean, people say it always, but it is a very, very, very important aspect. Portugal is at the crossroad of several continents. We, I said North America from Ashburn, that's 60 milliseconds, from Fortaleza, Latin America, that's 60 milliseconds, but that's also all the west coast of Africa all the west coast of Africa, which is probably the, the new very or oh, hype market for data in the next 20, 30 years, for sure. When you start an industry of subsea cable, you need cables, of course, you need a CLS, but you do also need a very solid backhaul because cables Networks needs to be interconnected. That's very, very important. In Elalink, we've addressed that, making sure that the station will be connected to Lisbon. In Lisbon, we have one solid um, open data center uh, provider, which is called Equinix, okay? Uh, which, which does one thing. It enables our customers to connect to an cable through a data center, which is not ours, but where they usually already are. So the cost of connecting to other cable is minimal. Uh, we're connecting to Madrid. Madrid is, I think, one of the most important growing places today in Europe, frankly speaking. We, we talk about Marseille. It's true, it's growing a lot and it continues to grow. That's an established fact. Madrid, look at what the announcements on data center have been over the past six months. It's amazing. Amazon, Microsoft, Google, I think. Yeah, all of them are starting to build massive data centers. The ability of the coast of Portugal to be connected to Madrid through solid, diverse 
uh, fiber optic network is very, very important. I'll, I'll pass that one. Now, let's, let's look at LLink because LLink is, is not a, a cable that has been built on the money of the over-the-top players, the GAFAM. Okay? It's a private initiative. And the private initiative needs usually two types of sponsors or money. The money comes from the customers and from the shareholders. So let's look at the shareholders because they're quite special. It's a infrastructure fund, a private fund. Okay, well, a private fund, they need return. They're very uh, greedy, maybe, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we have all these uh, little uh, uh, picture about what it could be. Well, Margaret is a very special fund. The number one investor in Margaret is EIB, number one. They represent most probably 50% of the fund that are the money that is being brought into the fund. The rest of the money is coming from other countries. Um, and you have here, you have uh, ECO out of Spain, CDC, Caisse de Depot et Consignation. We have uh, the Polish bank, we have Italy, we have Germany. They all pour money into uh, Margaret with Marguerite to have one objective, develop the infrastructure in Europe. And LLink was fitting that object into that objective. The second source of money for a private cable is customer. That's very important. Uh, that's, that's the base of everything, in fact. Okay? And the first customer that, uh, that was supporting uh, was Bella. We talked about it in the previous session, Bella being a uh, consortium made of Géant and Red Clara research and education networks, uh, which signed a 25 million euro uh, check to, to us. And that was a very dis important decision for Erling. Without them, this cable would not have happened. Okay, that's again European money like Marguerite is. The second was on the list or the first, maybe it depends on uh, the time at which we signed the contract, was Emacom. Uh, Emacom out of Madeira, Portugal, and then CVT, Cape Verde, and then after Mauritania and Telsius. Telsius being an international organization which uh, has its roots in Spain with Telefonica and is now operating at one of the largest network Pan uh, South American and uh, Atlantic network in the world. Okay, I'll pass that one. Uh, just to remember one thing, maybe uh, cables are always about project and companies. We always say this, right? We we talk about uh, companies, but in fact, well, oh, uh, it's about people, right? <laughs> Without the people, uh, it would not be anything. And building a cable like this is far more complicated, I think I know what I'm talking about here, than, than uh, any other cable from a consortium based or from the money coming from OTTs, even though it can be extremely compli complicated as well. But money is not always the issue in that case. Okay, this is, um, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the connectivity of the of the cable and what's interesting here is that of course we we're sending traffic to 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 brazil to fortaleza right but we also have a substantial amount of branching units that stop on the way to brazil um, of course i said uh, we said already emacom funchal okay in madeira we also mentioned cape verde with praia okay but there are three other branching units in the middle, which is Casablanca, Morocco, which should be uh, uh, laid uh, in the uh, second half of 2022, uh, commercially speaking. You probably are the, one of the first people to know about that. And uh, then after, we have uh, Mauritania, which we hope to land uh, very quickly, and, uh, and Canary Island, which, was, which we are working on. This is connectivity. A cable like this one, what's important is not so much the capacity, even though it's substantial, and I'll come to that. What is important is connectivity. If, a, if you have many cables passing by your coast and they're not stopping, it's like looking at a train in the campaign, okay, and not enjoying it because it does not stop. Connectivity is more important than capacity. Capacity of a cable, well, 
This cable in CNES will be by far the largest that has been seen for years. We estimate now the capacity of the LLIN cable landing in CNES to 190 terabits per second, which is gigantic. Okay, and that's thanks to the design. Uh, it, it does compare to any of the cables that we lend in the future, for sure. Plenty of capacity, yes. Lots of connectivity. And with the understanding that a cable like this one will last for 25 years. So if you increase capacity by 40% or 30% per year, this is what you need. 200 gigabit of capacity today will be in 25 years. I made the calculation. I think it was around 700 times more. 700 times more. So you need to plan. Planning is very important in submarine cable. Okay. CNES. CNES is a new landing in, in Portugal. There are not so many, uh, so many uh, uh, new uh, landings. We, we have a, a new one in Portugal that, that has come. Uh, I am looking for Norman. He's going to speak most probably about it. That's very important. When a new CLS is created, that's new opportunity for cable to land. And this is extremely, extremely important. CNES is new. And why did we select CNES? Well, look at it. There is plenty of land, easy to build, and you have one gigawatt of power here, arriving here. One gigawatt of power. Show me another place in Portugal where you have that. There is not. There is not. And that's very important. If Portugal is serious about developing digital infrastructure, it needs to concentrate somewhere it's digital industry. And we believe, people may not agree with that, and there may be other options, but we believe that CNES is the best place in Portugal to do that. And this is why we launched the concept of CNES Tech, which recently had an echo with what is now called CNES 4.0. That's the same thing. Hello. Yeah, I see, I see uh, our friend of CNES uh, 4.0. That's exactly the same thing. You need to concentrate your infrastructure in one place. Look at Fortaleza, look at Marseille, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Guam at this moment is starting to be a big up. Okay? There is no other way. If you start to localize all your landing and data center all over Portugal, you won't exist in the map, even though you are extremely well placed in, on, on the world map, geographically sp speaking. Fortaleza, Alpas. It times up. I think I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you.